Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and today Apple released iOS 18.3 Beta 1. iOS 18.3 Beta 1 is available to developers, and iOS 18.3 Public Beta 1 will probably be out soon. Now, iOS 18.3 supports all iOS 18 supported devices, and when you're going from a beta to a public version or from a public version to a beta, it's going to install the full OS. So you can see this was a very large install size of 7.38 gigabytes. It was about the same size on all the devices here. Along with this, Apple also released iPadOS 18.3 Beta 1, macOS 15.3 Beta 1, watchOS 11.3 Beta 1, along with other updates for tvOS, HomePodOS, VisionOS, and older Macs as well. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then general, then about. As you can see, the build number is 22D5034E, and this is an early version of iOS 18.3. We do have some features and changes in it, and the first thing is a modem update. We went from version 1.21.05 to version 1.40.02 on the iPhone 16 Pro Max. So hopefully that helps with overall connectivity, maybe some improvements throughout. Now the first new change I noticed when I booted this up for the first time on all the devices I got the hello screen. Within the hello screen, one thing I noticed that looked a little bit different is when it asks about sending information to Apple about analytics, it didn't give me the option to opt out immediately. You now have to go into your privacy and security, scroll to the bottom, go to analytics and improvements, and then turn it off here if you don't want to share that information. So that's something I noticed that seemed a little bit different. Another thing that's different is the image playground icon. When you see the beta icon as listed here by Aaron P613 on X, you'll see it switched from beta to sort of a lighter text there. I also noticed that it seems like it's a little bit different when you're creating something within image playground. So if we go in, maybe I'll create myself here and maybe we'll go and put something else here. We'll show more and we'll just use disco. It seems to be creating it a little bit different here with a different smile, which is definitely a little creepy. My hair looks a little bit different and it's just changing things up a little bit. I don't think that they've updated their models, but I did notice a significant difference every time I ran this this time around. So they could be changing that in the background. Something else I've noticed that's different is if we go into the control center and where we have type to Siri, and if we go in and actually add a control, scroll down to where we have that same option here, so we'll scroll down. The icon has been changed again from the keyboard with the little Siri icon to just Siri itself. So that's a slight change I'm seeing here as well. If we go into our settings and we go back to accessibility, within accessibility, if we scroll down, Apple has finally updated the camera control button with a dark mode icon. So that's another change in this update. And if we go into the App Store, We'll do that on the iPhone 11 since I still have it here. When you go into the App Store and you go to search, and it disappeared, there it goes, it came right back. It says use natural language to find things like apps that help me work out. So you can use natural language just like you can with the TV app and the music app with iOS 18.2. So that just keeps showing up now. It also looks like Apple has finally added the option for using robot vacuums within the home app. So within the home app, if we go to X again, you'll see Aaron P613 actually sees that in the code where we'll have the robot vacuum control. This was promised with iOS 18 and it looks like it will roll out with iOS 18.3 if there's no additional issues. A couple other things worth noting is there's no such thing as battery intelligence just yet. So if you lock the phone and it's charging, it's not going to show you that it's charging and how much time there is until it reaches your set battery level, whether that's 80%, 90%, or 100. Maybe that will be coming in the future, but so far it's not here yet. Another thing I noticed is the iPhone 15 wallpapers seem to be permanently gone. And as we scroll down, you'll see even on the iPhone 15 Pro Max, we don't have the iPhone 15 wallpapers. I'm not sure why they don't include them, if this is an oversight or if it's on purpose, but either way, they're just not there for some reason. Now, Apple did add Genmoji in iOS 18.2, and it looks like macOS 15.3 Beta 1 adds it to the Mac as well. Apple also updated their sports app today. So if we go into the app store, you'll see here where league standings now include ways to track which teams have qualified for postseason and which have been eliminated. You'll also see it says quickly catch up on scoring plays and big moments in games with key plays, a new play by play tab. And then when available, soccer and baseball games pages now include pregame lineups and you can schedule a live activity for any game on the Today tab. So those things are new if you're using the sports app. 
They also updated iMovie with a small fix. So if we go to iMovie, you can see that update here where within iMovie it fixed an issue when setting permissions for photos library access where it could freeze in iMovie. Another thing Apple announced today is the most downloaded apps and games on the App Store for 2024. You can actually see the App Store award winners here for this past year and also iPad apps, games, and arcade charts of 2024 in the US. If you go into that, it brings you into the App Store and you can see the US's top apps of 2024. It's region specific, but I'll link it in the description below if you want to check it out for yourself. As far as bug fixes this time around, if we go into Apple's public facing release notes, they only mention a couple things here where they resolved an issue with Genmoji where they fixed a personalized Genmoji might not generate without selecting a different person first. They've also fixed the writing tools for third party app integration. So this is something more for developers, but it looks like those have been resolved. They mentioned no other bug fixes here and no other new features as we expected, maybe Siri 2.0 or something different with Apple intelligence this time around. It does seem to that the overall saturation bug is not fixed hundred percent. You can see it right there very clearly. It's a little bit less saturated here on the lock screen, swipe up, and then it saturates. Also something else is the icons don't seem to be in dark mode, even though my icons are in dark mode on the home screen. So that's an odd bug we're seeing with this beta update. As far as iOS 18.3 beta 2's release, well, this could be a ways out at this point since we're now in the holiday season. If we take a look here, it's probably going to be in the second week of January at this point. That's typically what Apple does every year. However, it could be in the first week of January, last week of December, but that's very unlikely. So I would expect maybe some sort of update in the first full week of January or the second week of January. Either way, we don't have a hundred percent schedule as far as what they do with this. So we'll have to wait and see as far as the release goes. We also could see an iOS 18.2.1 this week. If there's additional security bugs they need to fix, that's something we've seen in the past. But after this week, I really wouldn't expect anything else for a couple weeks at this point. As far as the overall performance, well, this definitely feels a little bit different. Everything feels very responsive and smooth. You may see occasional stutters though, as it's updating in the background, but it feels very smooth compared to even iOS 18.2. There's definitely something different. Scrolling with ProMotion ramping up and down seems to be super smooth and just going into apps or maybe we'll open the camera here quickly. Open it for the first time on the iPhone 11. It's nice and fast and you'll see a little bit of lag there. The phone is getting a little bit warm as it's definitely doing something in the background still. This happens anytime you install a major update. So it is a little bit warm, but it's not hot to the touch. Even running Genmoji and Image Playground, it seems to be okay this time around. So no issues there, but again, we have to give it some time for it to finish upgrading in the background. As far as battery, well, it's been getting better with iOS 18.2. If we go into our battery, battery health, you'll see I have 77 cycles with 100% battery capacity. And if we take a look at the last 10 days, yesterday I had two hours and 29 minutes of screen active time, one hour and 49 minutes of screen idle time, and used about 55% of the battery. If we go to the day before, some days have been really great. You'll see a few days ago on Friday, I had six hours and 28 minutes of screen active time, two hours and 21 minutes of screen idle time, and didn't even use 100% of my battery. So hopefully this is just as good, but it is a beta. If we take a look at storage, we'll go to general, then iPhone storage, give it a second to load, scroll to the bottom, and you can see iOS is taking up about 18 gigs still. This is typical since iOS 18.2 and 18.1 with Apple intelligence taking up an additional 3.18 gigabytes. So the overall size is pretty large, but we have a lot going on here. You'll see system data just jumped up. This will go up and down as needed as it's processing in the background. So this gives a little description of that. Nothing to really worry about. It will go up and down as needed. Now it's at 16 gigabytes. So if it needs it, it will use it. As long as it's not taking up enough storage to use space for things like apps, I wouldn't worry about it. As far as if you should install iOS 18.3 beta one, well, with the holiday break coming up, I probably would hold off unless there's something specific you want to test as a developer. Otherwise, there's not really a reason to try it out. iOS 18.2 seems to be very stable for most people with great battery life after a few days of processing. Now we'll take a look at battery life performance and more this weekend in the regular weekend follow-up video. So we'll look at that and see how it's holding up. But for now, this seems to be pretty fast, but the overall experience hasn't changed much from iOS 18.2. As far as benchmarks, I did run those. 
we'll take a look at the history here. I ran it a couple times today and you'll see, I scored 3,506 for single core, 8,616 for multi-core compared to the previous one or the previous few. It is a little bit lower, but again, this is still processing in the background. If we give it a few days, that's when I scored the highest ever I've seen on iPhone 16 pro max. So the same is true on the iPhone 11. Let's take a quick look here. With the history, this is today's score, 1,749, 4,064 for multi-core, and compared to the previous ones, it's pretty good, but not as high as we've seen before. Again, it'll take a few days to measure that. So that's everything so far with iOS 18.3 beta one. If I find additional features, we'll talk about it in the weekend follow-up video. And if you found anything, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.